Welcome back to Middle East in Depth. Today we will be discussing Syria and see what the media is saying. We will also talk to political analyst based in Damascus, Nidal Naisi. Exclusive interview with Al Monitor, Britain's Minister of State for Foreign and Commonwealth Affairs, Hugh Robertson said that further militarization is not the way to end the Syria war. Dawood Kutab writes about the interview saying Robertson, who is also British Secretary of State for the Middle East and North Africa region, has opposed calls to arm the Syrian rebels, instead insisting that all sides need to return to the negotiating table. Uh, Robertson said, generally speaking, if you want to end war, arming both sides is not the way to do so. He noted that Britain has additional motivation for peace because of the presence of some 400 British jihadists that are fighting in Syria. This increases the importance of a political settlement there. Without it, there would be, no, there would be instability, which will increase extremism and bring about an increase of jihadists. And on the Palestinian peace process, Robertson noted his government does not recognize Israel as a Jewish state and does not back demands for Palestinians to do so. And Robertson admitted that the Israeli siege on the Gaza Strip amounts to collective punishment, but laid the blame for the humanitarian situation on Hamas, which he called a terrorist organization. And he added the single best thing to alleviate the situation in Gaza is to have progress in the peace talks. And talking about US President Barack Obama's visit to Saudi Arabia, Robertson stressed the need for the West to stand by our traditional allies in the Gulf, noting that Gulf states felt an existential threat posed by Iran's nuclear program. And when asked if success over Iran's nuclear talks would result in greater pressure on Israel over its nuclear program, Robertson said it had not been mentioned. And on the other hand, the U.S. seems to have a varied view. David Ignatius writes in the Lebanese Daily Star that the Obama administration, stung by reversals in Ukraine and Syria, appears to have decided to expand its covert program of training and assistance for the Syrian opposition, deepening U.S. involvement in Syria's brutal and stalemated civil war. The White House announced that President uh, Obama discussed Syria along with other subjects when he met Friday in Riyadh with Saudi King Abdullah. Expanded U.S. aid for the rebels would strengthen America's links with Saudi Arabia after a period of noisy disagreement over Syria, but it would also complicate tense relations with Russia and Iran, two key backers of Syrian President Bashar al-Assad. Obama appears more comfortable with a covert approach than with direct military intervention, as in Iraq and Afghanistan. Another selling point is that he in the enhanced aid program would have a counter-terrorism focus. The U.S. would help train free Syrian army fighters to combat al-Qaeda extremists, even as rebel launches, uh, rebels launch guerrilla attacks against the regime. Critics argue that an expanded training and assistance program first recommended by Obama's top advisors in mid-2012 is long overdue, but Ignatius adds Obama had been uh, cautious about descending what he sees as a slippery slope. So far, despite pledges of support for the opposition, he has authorized only a limited program of covert training and mostly non-lethal assistance. Obama also recognizes the checkered history of such covert efforts from the pave pigs in Cuba to Nicaragua. Details of the plan were still being debated this past week, but its likely outlines uh, were described by knowledgeable officials. Syrian opposition forces would be trained in camps in Jordan, northern Saudi Arabia and Qatar. The number of Syrian opposition fighters who would receive training would roughly double to about 600 per month. And finally, David Ignatius exhibits a White House memo stating that the expanded program would send a clear message to the Assad regime that there is no military solution to the struggle. President Assad has no incentive to talk now because he thinks he is winning. And David Ignatius adds the rationale bluntly stated is that to reach an eventual diplomatic settlement in Syria, it is necessary now to escalate the conflict militarily. This has been a hard pill for Obama to swallow, but uh, prodded by the Saudis, he may have reached that point. And joining us today from Syria is writer and political analyst Nidal Naisi. Thank you very much for joining us on the show. Thank you, Mr. Khan. Good, uh, good evening to you all, dear viewers. Thank you. Uh, why do you think the views of uh, you, Robertson, British uh, Secretary of State for the Middle East and North Africa, 
are a little bit different now than two years back when Britain was considering arming the rebels in Syria? Well, in fact, uh, because I think the data, uh, the data are uh, changed now, are different uh, themselves. The situation on the ground uh, uh, is also different. I think that uh, Britain, uh, 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 excuse me, I think that the, uh, the, the, the so-called Syrian uh, revolution is uh, disclosed now uh, more clearly for all people. Uh, it uh, has uh, the, 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 the revolution is uh, a, a fake name, I think, for terrorism. The terrorists are now in Syria, or terrorism in Syria is now the main story. Nothing but terrorism. You know, uh, this uh, this uh, man uh, who came back uh, from uh, Syria to to France and was preparing for a terrorist attack in uh, attack in uh, in France. Uh, uh, many terrorists are now. Uh, Going back to uh, to Europe, uh, who uh, have fought uh, in Syria and who have uh, committed uh, many crimes in Syria, these terrorists, I think, will uh, will uh, not spare Britain or Europe from uh, from terrorist attack in, in, in attacks in future. And that I brings think, me to uh, my second Britain, question, uh, Mr. Uh, Icy. Officials uh, uh, have in mind the the the, 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 the painful 9/11. Uh, experience uh, when uh, uh, they uh, armed the, the jihadists in Afghanistan, and when this Afghan uh, this uh, jihadist finished uh, war, they uh, went or they uh, uh, they went to, to to the United States to to, to commit uh, the the 9/11 uh, disaster. Uh, I yes. think now uh, the priority in in the whole world or uh, for. Uh, What's happening in Syria is to, to fight terrorism and nothing but terrorism. This, yes. this, I, uh, as I told you, there is nothing so-called Syrian revolution. There is only terrorism backed by uh, some neighboring states uh, uh, who are financing this uh, terrorism and sending uh, warriors and fighters and terrorists uh, from all that, over That to, will bring us to, uh, to, to my to uh, Syria, second to question, Mr. Naisi, uh, whatever you mentioned about uh, the threat in Europe. Now, uh, Robertson also noted that Britain has additional motivation for peace because of the presence of some 400 British jihadists that are fighting in Syria. Tell us more about this jihadi uh, phenomenon and the threat it might imply on the whole region. Yes, in fact, um, the jihadists uh, ha uh, have a, a, a globalized or international agenda. Uh, they are fighting uh, for uh, their, or, uh, their own agenda in the whole world. They are not restricted uh, to Syria. When they finish uh, from Syria, they may uh, go elsewhere. So that the, the, the terrorist uh, attack, attack uh, uh, or threat uh, from the jihadists uh, is not restricted to Syria. Uh, you, you, say, you, 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 you see when they finished from Iraq and they, 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 have, uh, they are uh, now uh, committing terrorist uh, attacks in Iraq, they are now in Syria, sometimes they were in Saudi Arabia, sometimes they were in Egypt, sometimes they, they, uh, they are now very active in, in, uh, uh, in uh, Libya, in Tunisia, in uh, northern Africa, in Mali, you know that the uh, French uh, troops went to Mali to, to fight uh, them. I think we are before an international or uh, globalized uh, uh, problem uh, and uh, the question which the whole world must unite to fight. It's not restricted to Syria. I think that the uh, British Prime Minister was very right when he is, uh, when he is attempting uh, and he is uh, noting uh, the danger and the threat of the, the jihadists, not only in Syria, mm. but also mm. all over the world. Yes. The, the next target may be in, in, uh, in Britain. You remember uh, the, 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 the policeman uh, who was slaughtered uh, b b b uh, some uh, months ago in, uh, in, uh, in Britain. Yes. Uh, those, I, uh, as I told you, have an international agenda. Uh, mm. And this is the main threat of the jihadists all over the world. Thank you very much, Mr. Nidal Aisi, for your contribution again with us today. Thank you. Thank you, dear uh, And for more updates, please visit levant.tv. Thanks for watching Press Review in Depth and bye for now.